Okay, in this video you can see I've got a set of 29s and an upgraded bushwheel I put on several months back. And they work really well. However, the tail wheel is still a bit too small. I've actually had it out in the sand and on uh, some muddy areas. And the main tires are floating. That tail wheel in that video is actually sunk in the mud. And it'll do it in the sand. A 400 pound tail couldn't keep up. So I decided to go ahead and build a new tail fork assembly. Drew it up, drafted it, and I installed it a little while ago just to test it out. And so I thought I'd show you a couple of these quick clips of how I did that. It's a little too small, it's great for a cub, not so much for the beast. So I'm gonna put on this one. I was sinking in the sand a bit with this. Wasn't quite enough displacement, so I want this one. So I drew up on the computer a new tail wheel assembly fork. We just got it cut. Put flying cowboys in it. <laughs> and uh, that's gonna go on here. Had to make a new adaption um, assembly to hold it. And an adapter plate. These two will go together in here. I gotta weld those up. And then with this bigger wheel, it's gonna shimmy like a mother. So I already had a tailwheel shimmy problem with this one. Um, it was hard to get out of it. I had to tighten it too tight where it had a hard time steering. Uh, it was borderline shimming or borderline tight. So on this bigger fork, it will make the problem worse. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make it so it turns easily and then I'm gonna put a steering dampener on it. Got spacers done, forks done, the assembly done. Let's put it together. All right, <laughs> okay. We got this assembly done, we're halfway there. Um, this is a bit of work. This is the part I was showing you a moment ago. This is the plate. We welded it up. This insert with the bearing assembly and the shank and this top part. I had to design it on the computer and throw it on a mill, so we made our own. The devil needs to be able to go 360 degrees, which makes it hard to do a dampener because a dampener um, can only go so far both directions. And so I was able to make all this linkage work so I can actually spin the tail wheel in 360 degrees. And the dampener goes all the way to 80% of throw one direction and back the other. So getting this to work, that looks simple now, <laughs> kind of sucked. <laughs> but uh, now that it's done, it's awesome. I can change the tension of the dampener. I can still go 360 degrees. I still have full steering on my tail wheel. What's nice is I can turn it easily, but I can't move it fast. So. Now to assemble the rear tire assembly, the new fork and spacers and bearing sets I made, and uh, we'll put the back end together. Okay, I got less than two months for Oshkosh, and I got some work to do. I got these old axles I need to yank off. They were part of an STC to put on 29s. The problem is they didn't do anything with the brakes at all, and you had to put so much brake force to stop 29-inch tall tires with that extra leverage. You couldn't do a 31 or 35, which is what I want to do. Uh, on a hillside like this, no big deal, but trying to get turned around on the slope with brakes, you have to put so much pressure. It was hard to finesse it. So I need to take care of the axles. That's what I'm going to do next. I've designed a new axle now that I'm full experimental. And I've lengthened this further just finished machining it out of hardened steel. So uh, it's ready to go. I've done a different uh, ring on it, a different offset. I've thickened up the core and the center and sized it because it's got a more leverage on it. So this is ready to go in. And now I'm gonna have, instead of one dual caliper Cleveland brake uh, assembly, I'm gonna have two. So I'm gonna put brakes on this side and this side. I hate to add that much weight, but it just didn't have enough braking to really be able to go to a 35 inch tall tire. So I'm gonna redo all the brake lines, the cylinders, the calipers, double up the number of pads. I'll have four brakes on this aircraft, two per side. All right, so this was a, a lot, one of those jobs that just got bigger and bigger as we went. So I machined some new axles. These are the original. If you line these up, you can see the length difference. I added over an inch offset here um, so I could clear the 35 inch tall tire. But let me show you some of the things that comes up as you're doing it. All right, so right here I've got the Wilga trolling link suspension arm. 
This is the trailing link gear. This gear, when I pulled it apart because I'm um, upgrading the axles to handle dual brake system on my Wilga and to give a little more offset on my 35 inch tires that's going on it, I need to make sure that this is strong enough. Uh, while I was pulling it apart, I noticed that this left side had been twisted. This is clocked like this. This aircraft, when I bought it, it had damage history. I went through the logs thoroughly. It had a ground loop, hit a wingtip. Um, everything looked superb on the repair. You couldn't even tell they had done it. However, this had been twisted at that time of the accident and never been noticed. I could see the impact point where it made contact, where it was compressed, and that could have only happened during a ground loop scenario to get the movement that made it bend. So I'm going to bend it back into place. I'm going to check what pressures it takes to bend it. And then based on those pressures, I'm going to decide whether or not I need to reinforce this. Two reasons. One, a little more load by offsetting my 35 inch tires a little bit and putting bigger brakes. And two, since it's been twisted once, and it's only a little, it does have a little bit of fatigue. So I'll probably reinforce it for that. But more importantly, I think I'm going to do both sides and beef it up for that offset. So cross my fingers, I can get this bent well, but you can see real close how I've locked this down. This is a jig I'm just going to throw away. It's holding the pivot side arm. This side here is locked right here. And I'm going to pull this that direction because it's leaning that direction. So wish me luck. So one, I had to make a stronger axle, which I did. But then this is holds the brake caliper and I wanted two sets instead of one. So you can't just take these and stack another one on the other side because they would offset an eighth of an inch. They would actually have to stagger to work. So you can't just buy another part. So like always, you dive into a project and you gotta do more. So I made these ones. So now the alignment is correct. I made my own part and the one caliper was on this side, one on the other. So it just made it another part I needed to make. That's done, it's ready to go. Let me tell you what I had to do. Since this is now a longer axle, and this pivots this way on the Wilga, trailing link in this direction, if that were the other side of the plane, this axle wants to twist this upward when you land, which wants to twist this square tube now this square tube is great strength if the pressure loads were on this point, pivoting up, no problem. But as the leverage moves further out, it wants to twist a square tube. It would be better to be a round tube, but I couldn't fit it on the knuckle. So rather than rebuilding a new knuckle and a new attach point and everything else, I needed to reinforce this too. Just again, you can't see it, but I've already repaired it. I split the box on a diagonal from this corner to this corner, this way. And I inserted a plate diagonally through it, put lightning holes in it, re-weld it, then cut it flush, and then re-weld it back up. By doing that, I can no longer take this box tube and twist it so that this moment that wants to rotate it won't rotate the tube, it'll transfer directly back up to the knuckle where it belongs, and uh, we shouldn't have any rotation on this part. So it's one thing always leads to another, but that's half the fun. I wanted a bigger tire, meant a new axle, I wanted better brakes because the tire's too big, it meant a new part here. Changing that meant I need to change here. I followed it, the chain all the way down. This is the end of the chain of modifications I need for the gear. I am absolutely confident I've overbuilt it. Of course, add a little more weight, but it's ready to go hit the back country. So let's get them installed. All right, so I've got both sides done. Both, I got sets of brakes on. So I've doubled up my brakes. Uh, I've sanded off my bearing races. I had just painted it all at once and sanded that off because that can't have paint. It's a very snug fit on my bearing uh, race. So I've got that sanded off. My 35 inch tall tire is ready to go on. So back to work.